You're listening to the new Mutual Audio Network. Welcome home. The following audio drama is rated R and is recommended restricted for anyone under the age of 17. Welcome to the Sonic Society, the world's largest showcase of modern audio drama. I'm Jack Ward and wondering what it is that always has me looking at great science fiction shows to begin the new year. I'm here with my co-host, David Alt. Any idea why, David? Because great science fiction is is wonderful. You you can't really do any better than that, really, can you? That's true. (laughs) There's something about science fiction, too, that, that hits me as like new things. So like at a new year, it's all fresh. Whatever yes, and, and science is. fiction is is always pushing the boundaries and the limits of the imagination. It's trying to imagine new civilizations and new situations for humanity. So uh, that's, I think, why. But uh, I guess uh, almost 16 years and you are still an enigma, Jack. I never let them know who you are. <laughs> yes, <laughs> but what we do know, we do know what today is. And it's two episodes of Copper Heart from Rig Stories. And they both begin right here on the Sonic Society. The audio drama you're about to hear contains mature language and situations. Listener discretion is advised. This is a work of fiction that sometimes references real places in a fictional manner. Please keep that in mind. United States Reconstruction Bunker, designated Echo Lima 27. Population 1,704, including 683 civilian and 1,021 military. AI support and records collection. Archive resource information system, also known as ARIS. The quarters of Staff Sergeant John Sellers, United States Air Force, USRB EL-27, Communication Specialist. Come here. Good afternoon, Staff Sergeant Sellers. Come on, Eris. You know you can just call me Jack. I know. Yeah, the only time you ever call me by my rank is when... Oh, shit. When? 13.30 hours. Well, shit. That doesn't give me enough time to shower and put on a fresh uniform. I believe the Colonel expected you to already be dressed for the day, Jack. Where's my comb? It is already the afternoon, despite the darkness outside. (coughs) (coughs) Fuck. Oh yeah? How dark? 10.8 lux. Okay. No fucking idea what that means. 
And why would I be in uniform during my off rotation? Outdoor light levels on a clear day, prior to the nuclear mishap, would be 10,000 lux. In layman's terms, it is very dark outside. I would say, similar to twilight. Awesome. Well, lighter than yesterday, at least. Incorrect. Yesterday at this time, illumination measured 11.3 lux. Today is darker. I am expecting illumination to rise by 100 lux by the end of the week, after the current front has passed. Rather pleasant for a nuclear winter day. I'd really love to talk lumens and weather with the wall clock, but I need to find my shoes. Where did you last see them? Eris, what did I tell you about pretending to be my wife? Your shoes are next to the front closet, under your jacket. Right where you kicked them off. What does Hayden want this time? Is this another shakedown? More bitching about the wreck area? Are Scott and Hill gonna be there? No, Jack. Just you. Ah. Uh, what does he want, Eris? I'm sorry, Jack. I'm afraid I do not know. Well, shit. Did he sound pissed? Mad? Angry? No. If I had to classify his tone, I would say the colonel was... on edge. Oh, fuck. Really? Great. Eris, uh, give me some kind of soothing noise. <laughs> A creak. Good. <laughs> Babbling brook. Now I have to piss. Wash your hands when you're finished, Jack. First you're my wife. Now you're my mother. Don't memories of either give you pleasant thoughts? <clears throat> Since my ex-wife took me for everything I had before she was roasted in nuclear fire along with my mother and father. No, they don't. You have my sincere apologies, Jack. I do not want you to be upset before your meeting Where the with fuck them. is my tie? Draped over the armchair, under the dog's blanket. Shit. Karen, be a good girl. Daddy will be back after his meeting. I'll bring you back a steak from the skillet. Eris, keep an eye on her, will you? Of all the responsibilities I have at this outpost, that one fills me with the most enjoyment. Is that sarcasm? Yes. Well, at least you're not as dishonest as my ex. Rig Stories audio drama by Michael J. Rigg. Major Stephen Baxter, Ellen Rhoda, great, a civilian, Dr. Owen Pembroke, Iris, Good afternoon, Lieutenant Colonel Hayden. Staff Sergeant John Sellers is here to see you. 
About time. Send him in. As you were. Have a seat. Sorry to disturb your free time, but I have something that may be right up your alley. Yes, sir. Would you like a drink? Uh, no, sir. Cigar? No, sir. Uh, if I may, I'm just really curious about why I'm here. If this is about that thing with the PA system in the civilian <laughs> block, no, that was no. Geiler's idea. You I was think just... I give two shits about your stupid non-com pranks? Son, we're going to be stuck in this shithole base until the radioactive thaw. Any idea how long that'll be? No, sir. And I really don't Harris. think that... It will be safe to leave the complex in approximately 41 years. Three months, nine days. Uh, yeah, I know, sir. I just... Old I just dogs think... like you and me may not live to see it. And as you know, we're always prepared for invasion. Yes, sir. But I, I think that mutually I'm assured... I'm not talking about the enemy on Earth, Jack. Uh, sir? Our planet is decimated. Lost. Dead. It's the job of the reconstruction bunkers to grow new life, protect what we have, and be prepared to defend, not just our nation, but our world. Um, yes, sir. Y yes, sir. In 40 I years, we'll crawl out of our holes, the Soviets and Chinese will crawl out of theirs. And what kind of world will we have? Sir, if I may, you, you suggested something about an invasion from other worlds. Did you You worked on Project Blue Box when you were stationed at Cheyenne Mountain, didn't you? Uh, I didn't think that anyone knew... Shall I just uh, cut about... to the chase? We lost contact with one of our USRBs. Oh. Was it an attack, sir? That's the best assumption, isn't it? Um... Excuse me, sir. I, I I find myself wanting to come back to this whole invasion from other it's worlds. It's Area 51. You don't mean the recovered UFO alien bodies Area 51, do you, sir? Cut the bullshit. I knew about Blue Box, so you know I know Area 51 was just a front for public gawkers and conspiracy fanatics. There were no flying saucers or gray aliens there. Were there? Oh, don't worry, Sergeant. I'm not gonna grill you for secrets that don't matter anymore, and I know your Cheyenne security level followed you here. Area 51 was home to so many fake military tests, just keeping the salivating public on the edge of their seats while the real shit was going on somewhere else. That's the gist of it, sir, yes. But... Since you and I both know Area 51 was a front, why the concern about losing comms with it? I mean, yeah, it could just be a technical issue, or I, right. I don't see how we... That's the most likely explanation. There are still numerous active defensive bases between any coast and Groom Lake, Nevada. No bombers can fly in the ash soup we call a sky. Satellite guidance is sketchy at best, with a lot of them falling out of the sky every day. And all of the missiles were launched over 18 years ago. Right. You said other worlds. Was there... We don't know. A... But if you eliminate all the possibilities, the one left, no matter how implausible, must be the answer. Sir, just to clarify, if I may, you believe we lost contact with GL-51 because of alien interference? You tell me. But sir, 51 was a cover. There wasn't anything there. Was there, sir? I'm assigning you to a new project with Q clearance. Top secret, compartmentalized. All that black tape bullshit. Yes, sir. I selected you because of your work with Blue Box. But anything you knew from your time with the ET Recovery Authority is child's play considering what's really at Area 51. Um, and what's that, sir? Again, you tell me. Eris. Yes, Colonel. Play it. Security clearance Hayden 1751 Alpha Lima Foxtrot. Authentication code approved. Playing item 943 Bravo. What the fuck was that? 
So, sorry, sir. What, what the... What was that? Last time I'll say this, Sergeant. You tell me. I don't know, sir. I, I was just... being reassigned to Operation Silverbox. Silverbox, sir. That's the only clue you're gonna get from me, Jack. If I told you everything I knew, it would influence your findings. I've cleared Aris to share all the data on GL-51 with only you and me. Yeah, you can count on me, sir. Who's on my team? God, you're pointing up at the... Aris. Sir? Your partner is Aris. Only Aris. And you're moving your things into the tower. You'll have direct access with me if you need to bounce ideas off something flesh and blood. But otherwise, you're cut off. For how long? Until you can tell me what happened in Nevada, and why we lost contact with USRB GL-51. But sir, I've got daily- You'll find all the necessary paperwork has already been forwarded to your console. Dismissed, Staff Sergeant. But what Just about- look over everything I sent you, and if your eyes hurt, have Aris read it to you. Just poke through everything and report back to me in two weeks. Who knows? You may have this shit solved by then. <sighs> yes, sir. I'll do my best, Colonel. Dismissed. Fuck. I think it will be fun working together. Oh, fuck you too, you wall mounted, all seeing piece of shit. Alright, good girl. Later. <sighs> Sorry, Eris. I, look, I just. That don't... is alright, Jack. I do understand your frustration, and I have no feelings to bruise. Okay. If we're gonna be trapped together, I need to make one thing clear right now. Now, do not preach to me like my ex-wife, do not scold me like my mother, and do not cut me off like Hayden. I promise not it's to- It's fucking annoying. I understand your point, Jack. I have to pack, I guess. I could bring Karen, can't I? Your pet has the same security clearance you do. L-O-L. <laughs> you funny, Eris. Eris, do you still have a communications link with GL-51? I mean, if someone was able to, could they talk to you from there? As the Archive Resource Information System, I am perpetually connected to all the USRB Internal Reactive Information Systems. Do you have a connection to the IRIS at USRB-51? Yes. That helps. You can talk to the IRIS there? Affirmative, Jack. Can you patch me through to talk with her? I'm afraid not. The information I'm receiving is data-based, not audio or visual. <sighs> okay, that's a start. She should be able to tell you then whether or not anyone is available in the complex, right? She can. They are not. Are they... dead? No. Okay then, um... Hmm... Is there anyone there she can connect me with? No. They are all... gone. Gone? Wait, what... what... what does she mean, gone? They didn't just walk out, did they? I mean... They never left the complex. And yet, they are all gone. David Steele as Aris. Michael Rigg as Staff Sergeant Sellers. Chris Magilton as Lieutenant Colonel Hayden. <laughs> and Maggie as Karen. Theme and all original music composed and performed by Astral Fog. You can hear more of Astral Fog, that's Fog with two G's, on iTunes. 
You've been listening to Copperheart, a Rig Stories audio drama. I hope you enjoyed our launch episode and that the intrigue brings you back next week for the first of our two-part pilot episode entitled GL-51, giving you a first-hand look inside the reconstruction bunker that disappeared. You can find out more about the show at www.rigstories.com, that's R-I-G-G stories, and be sure to click on the Copperheart credits link to meet our full cast. They are truly a talented group of artists, and it's my boundless honor to get to work with them week after week, and they do phenomenal work, so please be sure to check out their other projects listed under their names on our credits page. This has been Copperheart, a Rig Stories audio drama, and we'll see you next Sunday. This program contains mature language and situations. Please see our show notes for an advisory specific to this episode. Capcom. It's been a pleasure serving with you. We'll see you again in another 435 days. <laughs> if my wife lets me come back, four years is too much with you jokers. <laughs> You're the one with the sock problem, Hickson. <laughs> he wore socks? Hickson, you wore socks? <laughs> nice music selection, Capcom. Though I was expecting the Stones or Elton John. Don't you think it's a little overdone playing Rocket Man every time an ERV departs the station? I thought I'd switch it up a little. Give your departure a touch of class. I like it. So do I. Though I'm afraid it's going to put Hickson to sleep before we touch down. Yeah, he looks about out of it already. You done? Done? Yeah, next time we'll place my garter's death medal. Now we're talking. Ugh. Capcom, it's done. How's your outgoing signal? <laughs> oh, no, Don, you're not gonna get us to change the station that easily. Mm-hmm. No jokey one. We're getting some interference. Solar flares? None were expected. It was supposed to be a clear. <laughs> what the fuck? What the fuck is right? Morse, are you seeing this? Oh my god. What the hell are those things? Capcom, this is ERV2. Do you copy? Capcom, this is ERV2. Do you copy? Zansky! Yashiro! Anybody! Oh my god! It's gone! The whole station! All those people! Oh my god! The breed! The breed! Two clock high! Adjusting attitude controls! Powering main thruster! Done! Watch that fuel! This baby's not meant for joyride. Starting corkscrew. I'm on it. Hold on. You gotta help me out here, Dunn. It's like guiding an angry whale through a mud bath. Fuck. I can't hold it. We're gonna have to ditch it. Hickson, find me a nice soft patch down there. The angle's too steep. The heat deflection generator won't be able to keep us from getting cooked. Hickson, transfer 60% over to the H-Gens. On it. Commander, watch it. They're coming right at us. Why don't they serve? Place for impact. Stories Audio Drama by Michael J. Rigg.
United States Reconstruction Bunker, Groom Lake, Nevada, Area 51, Population 2208, including 705 military, 1,296 civilian, 206 science, AI support, internal reactive information system, affectionately known as IRIS. Time down, 18 years, 3 months, 21 days. Time remaining, 42 years, 1 month, 17 days. Monthly Senior Staff Meeting, Sub-Level 4, East Cafeteria. Sir. Sir. Grab your seats, people. We've got a lot to get to today. Come on, come on. Fill in those seats. Quiet down back there. Pinarski, find a seat. This seat's taken. You bet your ass it is, Sarge. Very observant. Keep it up. The looter! There's a seat over here. As Major Baxter said, we have a lot to get through today, so listen up. This is day 6,576 of our nuclear winter. Correction, Director. 6,581 days since the bunker was sealed. Thank you, Iris. You are welcome, Madam Director. Major Baxter has a special presentation for everyone. We'll be hearing... Oh, a special presentation. You think it'll be a film strip? I always did like having a substitute teacher. Except this is like... Like having that soccer coach who's a real prick and touched you inappropriately. (laughs) (laughs) Knock it off, you two. Is there something you want to say, Engineer Panarski? No, sir. O'Bannon here was just wondering if you coached soccer back in the day. <coughs> Why don't you bring your smart ass up here, where I can keep an eye on you? See? Coach Touchy Touchy wants my ass up there. <laughs> Would you stop? Yeah. Would you stop? I don't get what you see in that asshole, looter. See him? Oh, but we're not a... Hey, Luda! Sup, darling? Schiller. All right. Now the kindergarten is over. There has been a problem here in USRB GL-51 with keeping the peace. And with maintaining a sense of order that comes with keeping all of you safe, well-protected, and productive. To that end, we want to start keeping tabs on everything you do. Lieutenant Simcoe is passing out body cameras, which easily clip to your front breast pocket, lapel, or collar. Distribution is random, and we will rotate who has the cameras every three weeks. And make sure Panarski gets one. Well, so much for random. We didn't discuss this in our meeting, Baxter. What the fuck are you trying to do? At ease, Director. It's in the USRB bylaws that you signed. Bullshit! This is a fucking fascist move and you know it! I want to see those bylaws. I said, at ease, Rhoda. Does he realize any cameras worn by my personnel in the Archimedes lab will burn out? We can't have cameras in there, Rhoda. Don't worry about it, Albie. You guys have your own monitoring systems down there. Besides, this is one of Baxter's asshole moves against me. Gonzi. Seems more like a witch clips hunt. To the front of your garment. Looter. Clips to the front of your garment. Schiller. Clips to the Why front of your garment. Why doesn't O'Bannon get one? In fact, I'm noticing none of the military staff are getting them. Just civilians and science. What the fuck, Not your Lieutenant? place to worry about it, looter. Just clip it to the front of your garment and toe the line. This is bullshit. Baxter's not going to get away with a stunt like this. Yo, Bance. Loot has a point. Why don't you guys with the guns have to wear them? Because we aren't the ones fucking shit up. 
We're the law and order down here. Fucking Nazis. I heard that. Good. I'd hate to waste it. All right, all right, listen up. Anyone who has a problem with this can come by my office to lodge a formal. I know this is an issue for a lot of you, and your voices won't go unheard. Panarski, clips to the front of your garment. Oh, and if anything happens to your camera feed, we'll come to make sure you're okay. We still have a lot to go through, people, so can I please get your attention? Director, Director, these cameras won't work in the Archimedes lab. (sighs) That's been noted, Dr. Ogilvy. Just come by my office after we... All right, easy, everyone. It was just a mild quake. Iris, what have you got? Localized earthquake registering 3.2 on the Richter scale. Damage logs generated. I do not anticipate any aftershocks. She's been wrong before, Rhoda. I know. Meeting adjourned so we can address damage concerns. Pinarski, head that up. Shabon, Madame Director. O'Bannon, you're with me. Yes, sir, Major Baxter. Simcoe, I want you in the corridor outside Rhoda's office. Don't let things get out of hand. Yes, sir. Dr. Sir, record to psychology. Dr. Sir, record to psychology. Did you catch what Iris said? She said localized. Meaning what, Dr. Kipling? Most likely an object impact. Possibly a meteor strike or satellite debris. We've definitely had more of that since the International Space Station started breaking up. Did you get a body camera? No. Just as well. They don't work in the Archimedes lab. We know. Why don't you and Dr. Ogilvy check out Archimedes, and make sure the quake didn't destabilize anything. I'll meet you down there later. Way ahead of you, Dr. Albion. Albion, would you check in with Pinbrook? Make sure the medical staff has been alerted. I have already alerted Dr. Pinbrook, Director Rhoda. Thank you, Iris. Never mind, Ash. No problem. I'll check in with him anyway. Well, and here comes your little man. I'll talk to you later, El. Hey, Jim. Dr. Albie? Ma, do I have to wear this stupid camera? Does Baxter think I'm selling drugs at school or something? Give me that. Looks like yours is malfunctioning. Oh, Papa Bear's not gonna like that, Rhoda. I can handle Baxter. You okay? Don't worry about that camera thing. Baxter's just being a- Rick, I know. It's not that, Ma. I was just hoping that since I'm graduating and all, you and I can have that talk you promised about me actually taking on some USRB duties. We'll talk about it tonight. Fair enough? You said that yesterday and the day before, but- Okay. I'm sorry, baby boy. It's just... It's been crazy lately. And Baxter's being a... What was that word you said? Prick. You know, Ma, it sends mixed signals to the impressionable youth of today when you say baby boy in the same sentence where you promote foul language and disrespect of elders. The west passage is closed for maintenance. A passage west is a special for maintenance. Can you believe that asshole? Fucking body cameras. What's next? If there was room somewhere down here, I'd say internment camps. Cheery thought. Thanks, looter. So, 
What's the plan, Chief Engineer? I've got Schiller sounding the walls on the west side. You're welcome. I figured you and I can give the electronics a once over. And you're welcome. Again. Thanks, but I can handle that pig. So, pass the time? Sure. What's the game? Okay. How about fuck Mary Kill? <laughs> okay, okay. Haven't done that one in a while. Um Okay. Fuck, marry, kill. Well, Schiller, obviously. Mm. Mm. Kipling and O'Bannon. You're a dick. Hey, it's your game. <clears throat> so, Luter, who would you fuck? Who would you marry? And who would you kill? <clears throat> Schiller, Kipling, O'Bannon. Go. <laughs> okay. I thought you were going to give me a hard one. That's what she said. <sighs> Dick. Well, that's the joke, yes. You're an ass. Okay. Um, easy. I'd fuck O'Bannon, kill Schiller, and marry Kipling. <laughs> <laughs> that's totally not the way I saw that playing out in my mind. Why wouldn't you kill O'Bannon and fuck Kipling? <laughs> I'd fuck O'Bannon because he's in good shape. Except for the porn stash. And doesn't make me puke like Schiller does. I'd marry Kipling because he's gay. And a great guy. Very neat. I'd kill Schiller because he's a disgusting pig with an odd piggy smell who won't leave me the hell alone. Fair enough. My turn. Okay, and I'm going to gender bend it. Uh-oh. Fuck, Mary kill. Baxter? O'Bannon? Ogilvy? <sighs> Fuck Baxter, Mary O'Bannon, and kill Ogilvy. Fuck, that was fast. <sighs> I think about these things. Okay, so Just why... Just a sec. Iris? Can you test the inbound circuits? Of course, Chief Engineer. All systems are operational, except for Perimeter Security Unit SW-35. Fuck. Not SW-35. What's SW-35? No fucking idea. Iris, what? SW-35 is a radiation-shielded camera programmed to monitor the southwest ridge of the complex from an elevation of 1,424 meters, approximately 72 meters above USRB surface level. Iris, do you know what caused the camera to fail? Insufficient information. All monitoring systems were functioning at 98% efficiency, or better, within two seconds prior to the earthquake. Iris, are the adjacent cameras still working? Affirmative, systems engineer Luder. Hey, Iris, can you give me control of the adjacent cameras on this pad? I am sorry, Chief Engineer Pinarski. You do not have sufficient security privileges. Fucking Baxter. Iris, please grant Dennis Pinarski full access to all perimeter cameras. Access privileges changed. Chief Engineer Pinarski now has full perimeter camera access. Thank you, Iris. You are welcome, Systems Engineer Luder. Holy shit! How, how'd you do that? I said please. You think Baxter or Simcoe ever said please? It's a little something I was able to work into Iris's protocols. Besides, we're friends. That is correct. Systems Engineer Luder and I enjoy... Girl talk. Periodically. Just tell me you haven't taught her how to play fuck, marry, kill. Oh, that can be interesting. No, no. Don't ever. She controls my oxygen. <gasps> Stop playback. What? What was that? There, camera 47. Take it back about 30 seconds and use the scrubber. What the fuck? What the hell is that thing? Oh. Oh my god. What is it? It looks like an Earth return vehicle. Look. Delta wings and, the, and that and that looks like a vertical stabilizer. 
We have to tell Rhoda about this. Panarski, what about your body cam? If Baxter finds out about this... Let's just say, I misunderstood the directions, and I thought it was a colonoscopy probe. Ew. And yours? Simcoe wasn't specific about what garment it should be attached to, so when we stopped at the lockers, I clipped it to my coveralls. Ah, and since you never wear those... Ding ding! The man wins a prize. Is there any way to tell if anyone's still alive in it? Not from this angle. Yeah, camera 47 has the best angle. That thing looks torn to hell. But mostly intact. It's possible that there are astronauts still alive out there. We have to retrieve them before they're exposed to radiation for much longer. Not to mention the cold. <sighs> hey, we just found- No, Iris just told us. Way to wreck the reveal, Iris. Apologies, Chief Engineer, but my protocols include notifying all senior USRB personnel in the event of something like this. Did you notify Baxter? Major Baxter does not wish to be disturbed. I will open his comms and report this if you believe it to be an emergency, Director. No! We need a way to keep Baxter distracted while we go out there. Oh, fuck. Why is everyone looking at me? Allison Brands as Commander Morse. Ray Volk as Hickson. Graham Rowett as Dunn. Chris Magilton as Capcom. Sarah Ruth Thomas as Iris. Jared Worley as Major Baxter. Alicia Atkins as Director Rhoda. Aya Islam as Panarski. Haley C. McCarthy as Looter. Victoria Wan as Lieutenant Simcoe. Kenneth Faircloth Jr. as Schiller. Brian Penaloza as O'Bannon. Dylan Chambers as Dr. Ogilvy. Jen Avril as Dr. Albi. Rupert Fulhurst as Dr. Kipling. Hedley Knights as Dr. Penbrook. Arthur Marisi as Jim Rhoda. Emil Hegg as Communications Officer. Marina Sandoval as Communications Officer. You've been listening to Copperheart, a Rig Stories audio drama. If you'd like to find out more about the show or other awesome projects of our incredible cast, visit www.rigstories.com. If you'd like to contact the show producer directly, that's me, you can email copperheartaudiodrama at gmail.com. Theme and original music for the show was composed and performed by Astral Fog. You can check out Astral Fog, that's Fog with two Gs, on iTunes. This episode also featured the Blue Danube by Johann Strauss and was licensed for use in our two-part pilot episode. Copperheart was written, produced, directed, and edited by Michael J. Rigg. Tune in next Sunday to find out how Panarski distracts Baxter and what Rhoda and Penbrook find at the crash site. Until then, have a safe and happy week. And that's this week's show. Take a moment to both support Copperheart and everyone you hear here on the Sonic Society. The show notes for Rig Stories can be found on our website at sonicsociety.org. Be sure to contact us with your thoughts, questions and requests at sonicsociety at gmail.com or through Twitter at Sonic Society or at AstroTour20. And of course, there's always the Facebook groups, Audio Drama, Radio Drama Lovers and the Sonic Society group. We stand waiting for your thoughts. I'm David Alt, and here with Jack Ward, we will see you next week when we have a couple of tin cans to listen to. Have a good day. Have a lovely morning. The Sonic Society is written and produced weekly by Jack J. Ward and David Alt with original music by Sharon B. at SharonB.com. All features, interviews, and audio drama shorts are owned completely by their originators and provided to the Sonic Society by Creative Commons Licensing. The Society itself originates from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. 
Thanks for listening. This has been an Electric Vicuna production. The bridge between men and machine. What kind of change? One that changes everything. The organic and the digital. His head, it's metal. Your friend Alvin the Chipmunk is a non-stop recording hard drive. The ability to record every human sense. Sight, sound, even thought. Everything anyone could ever see or hear gets recorded. Any human being could be a spy. This chip will allow us to know everything, as will the people we sell it to. They'll see all the data. Don't you get it? There is no one that can stop us. Hey, Rockstar. The Rapscallion Agency, a new audio drama from the creators of the Leviathan Chronicles, follows two of its youngest characters, Lizette and Chloracan, who move to Paris. So, Chloracan is in Paris. Welcome to Paris. And find themselves entangled in a sinister plot to control the world's most sensitive information. I can take them out. I can do with three of them. <coughs> now there's two. We've got to get out of here. No one is going anywhere. Leviathan Audio presents The Rapscallion Agency, available November 1st. Subscribe now on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts.